That's before we found there was a prophet in the corporate revolving door. Right now, I'd like to introduce Heather Day. She is the executive director of the Community Alliance for Global Justice. They have a booth right over here, also known as CAGJ, though they prefer the full name. <laughs> um, they founded AgriWatch in 2008 to challenge the Gates Foundation's promotion of a new so-called green revolution in Africa. AgriWatch helped expose the Gates Foundation's purchase of Monsanto's stock in 2010, and recently CAGJ organized the Africa-U.S. Food Sovereignty Strategy Summit to strengthen ongoing organizing to oppose the push for GMOs and industrial agriculture on the African continent. So everyone, please put your hands together and welcome Heather Day. Hey, everybody. We are super happy to be here. Thank you so much to everyone who turned out and a really huge thank you to Lara and everybody else who organizes the March Against Monsanto. It's a big effort and it's pretty amazing to be part of a global day of action, right? Where this is happening all over the world. So as she said, my name is Heather Day. I'm the Executive Director of Community Alliance for Global Justice. Um, we're a Seattle-based grassroots organization, and we founded Augur Watch in 2008. I can't believe it's been that long already, but um, we founded it to challenge the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's questionable agricultural programs in Africa, including its involvement with Augur, which is the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa. The first thing that tipped us off that what they were doing what might, might not be such a great idea is that they hired a former vice president of Monsanto, Rob Horsch, to run the agricultural program. And Horsch is still employed by the Gates Foundation today. We started doing research and we found lots of connections between the Gates Foundation and Monsanto. And then, like she said, in 2010, we helped expose that they increased their stock holdings. They bought $23.1 million of, of stock um, in Monsanto. We're a membership-based organization. We have three programs. Augur Watch, we also, we come out of the protests against the World Trade Organization. That's where the genesis of our organization was. And we still work to fight uh, ongoing trade policy of the U.S. And then we also do local work, um, including supporting the new farm worker union, Familias Unidas por la Justicia, in Skagit Valley. Um, so we have a lot of local work as well. So we're a small group of really dedicated activists and we need your help. Besides just two part-time staff, we're entirely membership-led. Um, volunteers and interns really are the basis of our organization. So we're one way to really get concretely involved in this work locally. We hope you'll come visit us at our table. So yesterday, the Senate approved Fast Track um, for new trade agreements which starting with NAFTA are really a radical new way that corporations control where they can invest and under, which, under what terms. So they're really corporate investment treaties. They're, there's nothing really about free trade whatsoever in free trade agreements. The fast track is also approved by the House, so it's been approved by the Senate basically. If it's also approved by the House of Representatives and Congress, it would mean that Congress will vote on three new NAFTA style trade agreements including the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And they, when Congress votes on them, right, Fast Track is that they'd only be able to vote up or down. They can't make any amendments to the agreement. This is pretty crazy, because these agreements are compl they're negotiated completely secretly. The only way that Congress can see them is in a room in the basement of Congress where they can go by themselves with no aides, and they can look at the agreement there. They can't take notes. They can't take them out. Like, what is going on? If they're so great, if Obama is telling the country we need this, along with uh, Secretary of State Kerry who came to Boeing this week to promote them, why won't they let us read the agreement, right? So corporations, including Monsanto though, actually have a seat at the table. And you probably know this, but did you all know that the chief agricultural negotiator for trade agreements is Islam Siddiqui, a former lobbyist for Monsanto. So I mean, that's who's negotiating these agreements. That's whose interests they represent. There are no farmers at the table. A lot of what we care about, like food safety, labeling GMOs, limiting pesticide use, building sustainable food systems, all of that's undermined by these agree so-called agreements. And this is what Monsanto wants. They want our Congress members to be blinded by fast track. But we actually can do something about this. The good news 
is that the House of Representatives, Representatives does not have the votes to pass Fast Track right now. So we're actually winning. We've been delaying and delaying and delaying this vote because there's so much controversy about it. And there's more and more every day and power to Elizabeth Warren, who at the highest levels is demanding transparency, right? She's doing a great job. So we need to keep it this way. Washington State and Oregon are the two most important swing states. Our representatives are not committed to vote no on fast track. McDermott is probably going to, but even he's not being clear how he's going to vote. And he's only voted no on one other trade agreement, the U.S.-Columbia agreement. So it's so important. If you've never made a call to your Congress member, it's no big deal. All you do is you, you dial the number and you say, I'm calling to tell my representative to vote no on fast track. Thank you. Hang up. Please do that. It's so important. If you did it, awesome. Good job. If you could do it again and again, like they really need to hear from you. Letters are even more powerful. So that is one thing that we wanted to make sure you knew about. And this flyer, our, the, our awesome theater um, volunteers here are now going to pass out the numbers of the Washington State representatives, okay? So take this flyer and call them. Call them today. It'll take five minutes. So thanks, guys. Please distribute the flyers. So the Gates Foundation and AGRA are closely aligned with foreign policy actors and transnational corporations like Monsanto. Um, as you can see in the research that we published on this flyer, this shows all the different connections between Monsanto and the Gates Foundation in Kenya when we did this research. Um, in October this past fall, AgriWatch hosted the Africa-US Food Sovereignty Strategy Summit. This was a really big deal. It took us years to organize. We brought eight African leader, food sovereignty leaders to Seattle and about 20 leaders from all over the US, including all the really important groups doing works on this issue, like Food First and Food and Water Watch, the National Family Farm Coalition, et cetera, et cetera, for a summit to strengthen the bonds between these organizations so that our solidarity with our African allies could be even stronger in this fight against the Gates Foundation. As a result of this summit that took place in October, a couple of months ago in March, we organized a simultaneous action because our South African partner said, we just found out that there's a private meeting hosted by USAID and the Gates Foundation, taking place in London, that's to review this report that the Gates Foundation commissioned on how to privatize seed in Africa. So they said, can you do a demonstration? And said, of course we can. We love doing demonstrations at the Gates Foundation. So we did that on the same day that our partners did in London. And the point of privatizing the seed markets in, in Africa is so that companies like Monsanto can make even more profit, right? So. We were outraged that this meeting was happening at all, but especially that it was secretive and it was private, which it's our government, USID is involved. It shouldn't be secretive, it should be public. We couldn't even find out where the meeting was taking place, so the protesters went to the Gates Foundation headquarters in London. The, pro the protest was pretty amazing. We got covered by Como Radio all day. They did a piece, of, an interview with me on Como Radio. Cairo freaking TV. Cairo TV did a beautiful piece on what is seed privatization and what is the Gates Foundation's role in it. It was so well done, we were blown away. So we're actually getting mainstream coverage of these issues, which is really great news. In response to a reporter's question that day, and this is really important, for the first time we heard that the, the Gates Foundation representative that they called said that they have divested from Monsanto. So we, we're, a small grassroots organization that really needs more volunteer power and interns so that we can be tracking their investments you know every year but we haven't been looking at their 990 their entire investment portfolio year to year so we we looked at it and we're pretty sure it's true that they divested so victory right of course they haven't been public about it but i'm sure it's because of our pressure that they divested but there's, a, and there's other pressures on, on the Gates Foundation to divest from bad companies. Have you heard that the Guardian newspaper in England, their editor is about to retire and he wants to do something really important before he leaves. And what did they decide to do? They decided to pressure the Gates Foundation and one other big foundation to divest. Their, the Gates Foundation has $1.4 billion invested in fossil fuel companies. And they want to do something about climate change. And so they're saying one of the most important things to do is, to, is for the Gates Foundation to divest 
from these fossil fuel companies, and that's great. And over 200,000 people have already signed their petition. The Guardian has huge reach, so we're really excited that work is happening. But we know that Monsanto and the Gates Foundations are super tight partners in Africa, despite the fact that the Gates just mon divested from their stock. They're working hand in hand. So it's not enough for the Gates Foundation to get rid of their stock holdings, either in fossil fuel companies or in Monsanto. Monsanto has a new campaign, they have a new PR campaign. You can go, and I recommend you do this, to see how sophisticated and grassroots looking their crazy propaganda is. It's called discovermonsanto.com. And if somebody just pointed out to us that on Monsanto's website, the second paragraph, they say that they are partners with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Right? So like, the Monsanto's being upfront about it. The Gates Foundation well, hides this. It is not anywhere on their website that they're working with, the, with Monsanto. We've done tons of research. It is difficult to do research. They hide the truth of what they're doing. But Monsanto's very clear about it. So that was helpful to us. <laughs> so what we want to well, encourage you to think about is that it's not enough to divest from fossil fuels, especially if the concern is climate change. The Gates Foundation has to divest from all corporate-based agriculture, which is one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gases. They have to cease supporting all industrial agriculture and GMOs and follow the advice of major institutions who are in agreement that small and medium-scale farmers cool the planet. And agroecology is the only sustainable future for agriculture. We all know from our experience with Initiative 522 getting defeated here in Washington State, that would have meant the GMOs were labeled, right? That Monsanto will spend its billions of dollars whenever they feel threatened by our ever-growing food sovereignty movement, globally. And the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's committed to the same anti-democratic processes in Africa. They are going country by country and dismantling the laws that ban GMOs. They are putting pressure on those countries to change their laws along with lots of other things they do that's really anti-democratic and non-transparent. So that's why we're so thankful that the march organizers here in Seattle were very clear that when we leave here, we're marching to the Gates Foundation. So Monsanto is a really hard target to influence, right? I mean, it's this gigantic company. Um, but we are seeing a dent in their profits. We are having an impact, and we're forcing them to have these PR campaigns. We need to force the Gates Foundation to change as well. We need more people pressuring them to cease their partnership with Monsanto. And if they must support agriculture in Africa, which we're not even sure that's the best idea, honestly, because of their technological approach, which does not end hunger. But if they must do that, they need to support agroecology and food sovereignty and, sm and follow the lead of small scale farmers in Africa. That is the only way that they can be involved and have it make a difference. They won't achieve what they're trying to achieve unless they follow the lead of the people who are growing the majority of food in Africa. That's not who the lead of, of that's not whose lead they're following at all. It's the transnational corporations. So we really hope that you stand with Community Alliance for Global Justice and get involved in our campaign. We need we need your volunteer power. And um, I wanted to let you know that our three main areas right now as a result of the Africa-US Food Sovereignty Summit that we held, we have three main campaigns right now. One is against the GMO banana, what the Gates Foundation is funding. Um, they want to introduce it into Uganda. I didn't know this, but you know, like Mexico is the heart of culture of, like corn is the heart of the culture of Mexico and why, one of the reasons why NAFTA was so devastating. Bananas are the, at the heart of culture and ritual around important events, births, uh, marriages, etc. in Uganda, something I learned through this work. And the Gates Foundation wants to introduce this GMO banana and they're organizing, they don't, they don't want it. They're trying to test it on female students at Iowa State University. There's a human trial planned. We've managed to stop the human trial. We're really, that's pretty amazing victory. For the time being, there's amazing students organizing, graduate students at ISU, Iowa State University, which is the heartland, right, of these companies, um, that are putting pressure on the administration, who's refusing to participate in public events they're putting on, they're being completely non-transparent, but there's a petition online to put pressure on that, um, on that university, so that's another thing that you can do, a concrete ask. Um, we got a letter signed by folks all over the world that's on our table over there um, calling for transparency and what they're doing and, and advocating against the GMO banana. 
Another campaign we have is about something that's kind of not very well known. It's the G8 New Alliance for Food Security and Nutrition. It's, it's a complicated new scheme, but it's basically the eight countries involved in the G8 um, pushing the, the new so-called Green Revolution in Africa. There's 10 countries that are involved in. Um, and if you go to the website, there's agreements for each country, and Monsanto, and the agreements are what each company is committing to do in each country, and you can re just read on the website what, how Monsanto is gonna invest in each of those 10 countries, and they're trying to expand that all the time. So when our African partners were here, they're like, the US government started this, you guys are the ones who started this, but you're not organizing around it, what's up with that? So CAGJ is taking that on, along with our partners nationally, to raise awareness about this new alliance and to just try to stop it. So that's another thing we need you to help us with. Finally, we also are fighting for what we believe in. So we're doing, we're organizing exchanges of farmers who practice agroecology or sustainable agriculture between African farmers and farmers in the US to build the food sovereignty movement in that way and to you know, learn from each other. Um, so we're doing a lot of concrete work. In addition to that, we do research into a lot of different areas to help expose what's going on. And we have fun. We're an activist group. We love actions like this, for example. So please join us. And thank you again to everyone for being here, for all the work that everyone's doing. It's so important. Yay! One more thing. So we're really proud to be part of the international movement of peasants called La Via Campesina, the Peasants' Way, which um, we're a member of through the National Family Farm Coalition. So they say, have this chant, we're gonna do it. So I say globalize hope, and you say globalize struggle, okay? Globalize hope, globalize struggle, globalize hope, globalize struggle, globalize hope, globalize struggle. Yeah, thank you, woo, we can do it.